Welcome back ladies and gentlemen, we just got a huge update for Mortal Kombat Onslaught. I'm going to be breaking down everything that is in this update, starting off with our next Chronicle and it is confirmed that we're getting our first guest character in Peacemaker as our next Chronicle character, but I'll go into him in a couple more days once that event goes live. That way we can also take a look at the event store as well and see what we can get out of this new Chronicle, even if you're not going to summon Peacemaker. But moving right along, and we do have a couple of other big changes, including a new story chapter and a new character. But before we get into the obvious stuff, I want to take a quick look at some of the less obvious things that are going to make a big difference to the game. The first one is that the level cap has now been increased to level 120, as well as a slight change to when you increase the star power of your characters up to level 6. Rather than getting a 6 star, they're now changing the color of the first star of that character. So you'll see with Shang Tsung here, it's more of a silvery color on that first star. This could mean in future you'll be able to upgrade that star level even further as they try and increase those level caps. You will need to get to 6 stars before you can go from level 100 up to 120. So a lot of soul binding to do for your characters if you're going to upgrade them to that point. The reason that I wanted to point this out first is because any future content that we get or possibly even content that they've got planned in the very near future could require those higher levels to be able to compete and get through them. It's very important to be doing these upgrades. As you probably already found out early on in the game, when you are upgrading your characters, if you left them at around about level 80, they just weren't able to compete at that higher level. But now that there's a lot more access to things like XP and gold, you should be able to get those characters at least up to that level 100. Once you do get them up to six stars, you should really be thinking of getting them up to that level 120 as soon as you possibly can. And speaking of new content, we now have access to chapter seven of the story. This time it is Shao Kahn's story. And I know a lot of players have probably already put a fair amount of resources into this guy. I see him in the arena all the time. If you haven't really done much with him, Make sure that you go into the story first before you do any upgrades because it will upgrade some levels for you which means you will be saving on some of those resources. This time it will not bump you up an extra star level so you will have to do that yourself. But there is nowhere for Shao Kahn to hide in this story mode. You will need to do some decent upgrades to get through this one. So make sure that your gear is at least at level 10 for every piece. You want to make sure you've got lots of defense, lots of health. This guy's going to be taking some hits. He is a pretty decent character, so don't worry too much if you have to pour some resources into him. If he's not someone that you use very often, just do the minimum upgrades that you can, see if that's enough to get through these battles. Then if you do need to bump him up just a little bit, you can always do it as you go, just so that you're not using all of your resources on a character that you're not really sure if you want to use going forward. Getting this chapter so soon after chapter 6 means they might be ramping up the release of these ones. We know the only other story character currently in the game that we haven't seen a chapter from is Quan Chi. If his story is coming up soon, you might want to be preparing him. But I know, again, a lot of people have poured quite a lot of resources into Quan Chi, so you might be right there. If that is the case, and they are ramping this up, it could also mean that we will be seeing Shinnok in the game very, very soon. And I know that that is a bit of a scary concept because I get a lot of comments from people talking about how good the Netherrealm team is. And adding Shinnok to all of that is just going to make it even worse. But if you think that is scary, I do have one other thing that you're probably not going to be too excited about if you don't like going up against the Nether Realm. Now we do have a brand new character that is added into the game. She will be able to be summoned the same time that Peacemaker's event goes live. 
and that is Mad Queen Melina. Yes, it's always good to get Melina into the game. I know she is a fan favorite. We've wanted to see a five-star version of her. Just as a side note, I really would like to be seeing a lot more three and four-star characters added to the game. They're so much easier for the majority of the people that play this game to collect, and it's always good to see them being able to build their rosters and compete on different levels as well. But back to Melina, the reason why she is so scary, if you have a look at her tags, she is aligned with the Netherrealm and the Brotherhood of Shadow, so she is going to work really well with Quan Chi. Now I'm going to go through her kit because she looks like she could do a hell of a lot of damage. She is a mind character, she is an assassin, so very good against some of those boss battles and could really get you through the Scarlet one, so she could be worth adding to your roster. But let's take a look at her abilities, and her first auto ability is the Rolling Thunder. They've finally bought this one into the game. If it lands a critical hit, Melina keeps spinning and hitting additional times for each living Netherrealm ally. If Melina is in a state of focus, she receives a crit chance boost. Now focus is something that you will see throughout the kit, so just keep that in mind. Her other auto ability is Bloody Nails. If this ability lands a critical hit, she attacks two more times, ignoring defense and dealing additional damage that increases in correlation to her crit damage. Any critical hit stuck with this ability deals vampirism damage. So she also is going to get a bit of healing out of this as well. For her passive Blood Drinker, when Melina heals from vampirism, she receives a critical chance boost. And while utilizing focus, Melina receives a 100% crit chance boost to her basic attacks. When Netherrealm or Brotherhood of Shadow teammates heal, Melina also heals for a percentage of what they receive. Now just by putting her in a team with Quan Chi and Shadow Mancer Noob, I don't need to tell you guys just how dangerous that can be in topping her up in health. If you do come up against her, you really want to try and target her first and get her out of the battle as soon as you possibly can. Because now we're going to talk about her special ability, Hail to the Queen. And this is utilizing her teleport kick from the MK Games, another really cool move to see brought into Onslaught. For this one, you can select any enemy that you want on the battlefield. Really good for getting into that back line, especially against characters like Kenshi. And once she delivers that first kick, she'll drop down and deliver another kick dealing more damage, which increases in correlation to the foe's defense. She will then focus on that enemy, which actually brings into play all of those other things that we were talking about before with focus. If Melina is enhanced by any ability that grants vampirism buff, during this attack, she completely ignores defense and lands a critical hit. So right now, I can't see the actual values of the damage or the cooldown of this move. But this could be a very dangerous counter to someone like Kenshi, which I know a lot of players have been feeling that he's a little overpowered. Maybe this is the counter that we've been waiting for just to even up the odds a little bit. I like it when they do bring in other characters rather than having to buff or nerf other characters. I just feel that that doesn't really fit with the game very well. Sometimes you do need that balance, but having a character that can actually do these things can work really well in these types of games. Taking a quick look at her combo meter, the first ability that we've got here extends her basic melee attack, summoning Psy and sending it through the air, slashing at her foe, dealing damage. After critical hits, she keeps attacking, barraging her foe with flying Psy up to five times, dealing additional damage. At level 3, it looks like she gets a completely new move, where she goes for the pressure point, spinning up into the air, sending 3 Psy flying down at her foe, dealing damage. Each hit from this move possibly inflicts a stackable marked for a duration. 
Guys, she looks absolutely amazing. I do have enough orbs to be able to summon her. So when we do the Peacemaker video in a couple of days, I may summon Mad Queen Melina into the game rather than Peacemaker. I don't think I'll be going for him. On paper, Melina seems really good. We'll have to test her out just to see what we can get out of her. I'll try and save up a few resources so we can do a bit of testing there. The only unfortunate thing is that she doesn't have a relic to go with this character. There aren't a lot of really good assassin relics, but I'm sure that we'll be able to find something just to put a nasty edge on this character. So stay tuned for that one. There is one other really cool thing that they have added for this update that we've been asking for so long and they have finally gotten rid of that stupid 24 hour countdown for your daily claims. They now reset when the daily reset happens. So you can claim that any time within that 24 hour period, which is definitely something that we welcome into the game. It's so much better for all players. We should not have to miss out on some of those basic things. The other change that you're going to find is in the supply store. We've got a whole heap of new items in here. Hopefully this gets refreshed a little bit more often. You can see that there are a few discounts in there as well. So from time to time, we might be able to get a better deal on some of these different relics and things like that. Overall, I am pretty impressed with this update. A lot of cool new features coming in. Hopefully we do get some more game modes and things like that in the near future. That would be really fun to explore. But if you'd like to support the channel, a super thanks would be very much appreciated. Other than that, guys, like and sub, you know the deal. We got plenty more Onslaught coming your way. Don't miss out, and we'll catch you in the next one.